We stand within the pleasure dome decreed by Kubla Khan to taste on you the fruits of life, the last immortal man. Find the sacred river realm to walk the caves of night. Oh, I will dine on honeydew and drink the
that song. I think I'm a Rush fan now. Um, thank you for coming. We welcome you. Marty, Jerry's mother, and two sisters, Tammy and Wendy, I know are so glad that you are here. Come to support uh, them and to honor Jerry and his life. Um, I have mixed emotions because I prayed very fervently that God would heal Jerry because we did interceding together here in Theater 7. So, But Jerry wanted to go see Jesus. <laughs> so what could I say? And he's up there watching this. But thank you for coming. And uh, I know this is going to be a heartfelt, uh, warm service of remembering Jerry, remembering the God that he loves so much and is with right now. So we are going to be led in worship, I believe, on this time. So uh, let's worship our Lord together. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living home. Your presence, Lord. Tasted and seen of the sweetest of love when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Oh, and 
us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Good, good friend, good, good friend of Jerry's, Rabbi Michael Smith comes and leads us in prayer. Let's come into prayer. Avinu Machenu, our Father and King, the Holy One of Israel, Almighty God, we bless you for this day. We thank you, Father, for so many blessings and that blessing in so many lives. It's Jerry. And um, Father, we thank you for the moments. I even have friends I haven't seen in a long time. Even Darren's here, Father. People that we've known, we've and it's such prayer and intensity, Father Almighty God, for what you have done through Jerry in my life, I can't repay. And I thank you for what you're about to do today in honoring a man who is not perfect as we are all not perfect. But the fact is, he strove, as I heard the rabbi this morning, he strove for you. He knew your holiness and he knew your love. And Father, we bless you for today that it is about to get down with good memories, wonderful thoughts, and a time of just coming before you and saying, bless you, Father, for the time we have. I pray this for Shem Bishom Shiv in the name of Jesus Christ. So send Sar Shalom. Amen. Amen. Maybe seated. 
Now another very good friend, uh, Darren Wheatley is going to come. Yeah, yeah, feel free to come, Darren, to the mic. And I'm uh, going to read some, uh, I'm assuming, some famous scriptures of Jerry, uh, Matthew 6 and Psalm 3. Hello. And Jerry's a really dear friend of mine. <laughs> yes, sir. This is the scriptures that uh, apparently he wanted us to read. Is this? That's Matthew 5, 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. And another verse or a scripture is Psalm 3, Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many there be which say of my soul, There is no help for him in God. Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, a shield for me, my glory and a lifter of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Selah. I laid me down and slept. I awake, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people. They have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God. For thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon thy cheek bone. Thou hast broken the teeth of thy ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessing is upon thy holy people. Selah. Truth. Amen. I would like to give greetings to each of you on behalf of our brother in Christ, Jerry Tully. And I'd like to give greetings. Uh, my understanding is that Leslie, uh, one of the sisters, uh, is out in California and she's joining us through live stream today. I would encourage you as well if you feel comfortable sharing this live stream uh, in honor of Jerry's life, you can go to Vanguard Church and do that on the Facebook page today. We were trying to remember, Marty and I were, and we were talking prior to the service, uh, you know, as you get older, your memory starts to fail you a little bit, right? And you start to remember things as if uh, you're confident that you remember them accurately, and so uh, it's important to always uh, double check and triple check and uh, my memory uh, seemed to serve me correctly on this, that uh, uh, I do remember the moment in which I met Jerry. Uh, Jerry came uh, to Vanguard, and uh, he had a three-piece suit on with a tie. I mean, he was, uh, he was looking good. And my understanding is uh, the first person that Joe Herman met at Vanguard was Jerry, and he thought Jerry was the senior pastor, and... <laughs> Uh, that was uh, Joe's first experience at Vanguard. But I remember the spot where I was. Uh, I saw Jerry before I met him. Uh, and I uh, met Jerry at the back door, uh, the set of doors uh, to your right behind you, to my left. Uh, and I just remember from day one, uh, he very affectionately referred to me as pastor. And uh, there have been few in my life uh, that have been as honoring uh, to my life as Jerry. Uh, Jerry, um, I think Jerry had a sense of humor. I really do. Uh, it was a curious sense of humor. Uh, but uh, once you got to know Jerry, uh, you knew when he was being funny. Uh, and when, you know, and he would be serious while being funny at the same time. At least that was my experience. And uh, I grew very quickly to love Jerry and to learn of his intercessory gift. And you can see his Bible on the table down here in front of me. Uh, Jerry was not just a man of prayer. Uh, he was also a man of the word. Uh, a lot of times people would come in and Jerry would be face down in the altar. And sometimes people that didn't know Jerry would say, Is, should we check on him? Do you think he's okay? And I go, Jerry's fine. The devil ain't okay. Right? Amen? 
when the devil saw Jerry on his face, the devil knew there was trouble at hand. And one of the moments that stand out to me um, with Jerry is uh, at my 50th uh, birthday at our farm, uh, Jerry said to me, Pastor, um, I'm going to study under you till I die. And it was a moment in my life already, but it was even more of a moment in my life. And so, uh, Jerry, thank you for um, making good on your promise, and I'm making good on my promise today too. And there's something that you realize, you know, as I stood with Jerry uh, just a little over a week before he went to be with the Lord or just a few days before that, and uh, he said, hey, I'll, I'll be sure and say hi to your mama for you. And see, the longer you live, Brother Mike, the more you realize you don't want to stay here. And see, for me, uh, I've had the privilege, just like Pastor John, I know you have, and some others in the room, I've had the privilege of being in some of those final days and some of those final moments uh, with some of the godliest people I know. And I have to be honest and tell you that when you get in those moments, yes, there's a lot of challenge, there's a lot of sorrow, there's a lot of grief, but there's also some envy. When I sat by Jerry just a few days before he went to be with the Lord, uh, I could tell even without asking that he had made peace. And I know that there were some things that he was wrestling with through his life, and I know that there were some questions that he had for God, just like we all do, right? But I could tell that Jerry had made peace with those things, and uh, I admire him. I admire his faithfulness uh, to live for Jesus, uh, to give his life to Jesus and for Jesus and for God's people. And we had the privilege of having him on this stage at Christmas time. We had the privilege of seeing Jerry one last time lay in the altar face down uh, and seek the Lord. Uh, and it is uh, incredible and it is a privilege uh, to stand here today and honor our dear friend and, and incredible, mighty prayer warrior of God, Jerry Tolley. Amen. As I thought about uh, what God would have me share, you know, because I learned a long time ago, uh, the only person that can tell me what to say uh, at someone's funeral, uh, yes, I want to know what the scripture is, uh, but the Lord has to speak, the Holy Spirit has to speak. And uh, because this is his sacred moment. And uh, the most sacred thing about a human being, yes, is their soul. Uh, but as a human being, one of the most sacred things about a human being is their suffering. And so many of us hate the suffering in our lives. But see, that is the very thing that taught Jesus obedience in the book of Hebrews. And see, the most sacred thing about a human being that you get to be a part of uh, is their suffering to step into the darkest moments of their life, the most confused moments, the most chaotic moments, the most sorrowful moments, the moments in which you are reminded, as the proverb says, only the heart knows the heart's pain. And we can be there for each other. And let me just say, man, were there people, right, Pastor John? our deacons in the house today, many other intercessors and loved ones that uh, invested and loved on Jerry, uh, put up fences, you know, and, and tended to things. And Darren, I know he spoke highly of his time that he spent with you those last few days and your love for him. Uh, that, that is remarkable. Thank you. Thank you. I think about in all of our lives, when you come to these moments of darkness and you come to these moments of sorrow and you come to these moments that feel very futile and, and you uh, are tempted, and, and let me just tell you, as a pastor, I am often tempted to want to take up a reproach against, against God Almighty because of what His choice servants have to go through sometimes. And I have to guard against that. We have to guard against that. We don't get to uh, pass judgment on the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was before him endured the cross. Jesus earns the right to decide how the story goes. 
And I had the privilege yesterday of attending a memorial service of my um, good friend, Pastor Terry Thomas. His wife went to be with the Lord. And what the pastor said there, I'm going to have to steal it. All right? He said, Jesus is the author and finisher. He is the writer of the story of our lives. And I just want you to know that the story of Jerry is a bestseller. Amen? Amen. Isn't that good? That's good. I didn't think of it, but it was good. So I go back to the first century because what's beautiful about humanity is we all have the same questions. From generation to generation, we share similar questions. And I want to read you what Paul said to the Thessalonians because after Jesus was resurrected and ascended into heaven and sent the Holy Spirit to live inside of us, believers started to die. And that was a shock to them. See, they didn't know how this new kingdom was going to go. They thought Jesus, the King of kings and Lord of lords, would establish his throne immediately. And then when he went back to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit, they thought to themselves, well, okay, he's going to govern from Zooming, all right? He'll Zoom in with the Holy Spirit. And then these faithful, godly people that we see in the book of Acts began to die, to experience persecution. And those early words that Jesus spoke to his disciples start to come back and they start to panic a little bit and they start to wonder about death and they start to wonder about eternity and the things that we wonder about. Listen to what Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 4.13. Brothers and sisters, We don't want you to be uninformed about those like Jerry who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. Did you catch that? God never told us not to grieve. But be careful grieving without hope because as a follower of Jesus Christ, our greatest days are our eternity. Amen? For we believe, this is what we believe, that Jesus died, that he rose again. And so we believe that God will bring with Jesus, i.e. Jerry, those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, us, we who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet call of God, and the dead, Jesus, the dead in Jesus, Jerry, and our loved ones, will rise first. Amen? And after that, we who are still alive are left, us, we're going to get caught up together. I can't wait. At first, it's going to be the moment that some of us can fly for the first time. We'll be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And I want you to understand that as I read these passages, I'm trying to read them through the lens of Jerry's personality. Amen? Because this is how he would see it. He, he had a, a, a wit about him. And so we'll be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Revelation chapter 20, verse 6 says this. Blessed and holy are those who share in the first resurrection. The second death has no power over them. Jerry's not going to die again. See, the Bible teaches that if you give your life to Jesus Christ, there's only one death. And there is a physical death. The Bible says that there is a final enemy called death that all of us must face, but Jesus has already whooped him. Amen? Amen? And so through Jesus Christ, we have the promise that we will never face the second death 
which is an eternal death. Revelation 21, verses 1 to 7 say this, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. There was no longer any sea. See, this guy was on an island. I saw the holy city of the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Guess what Jesus is going to do? He's going to wipe away every tear from our eyes. There'll be no more death, no more mourning, no more crying, no more pain. The old order of things, they're over. They've passed away. And he, Jesus, who's seated on the throne said, I love this, I am making everything new, including your kidneys, Jerry. Amen? And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and they are true. And he said to me, it's done. I'm the alpha. I'm the beginning. I'm the omega. I'm the end. I'm the beginning. I'm the end. To the thirsty, I'm going to give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. And those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I'll be their God, and they will be my children. That's the covenant promise that he gave to Abraham that he fulfills through Jesus. On the final time that I got to be with Jerry, and I was grateful for that opportunity. Marty and Cindy uh, and Tasha and I were able to be with him, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly, six days prior to Jerry meeting his Savior and Lord. And I felt very strongly that Philippians chapter 3 was the passage that I was to read over Jerry, that it was to be the final passage of Scripture uh, that God wanted me to read and to speak over Jerry's life as I took inventory of his struggles, as I took inventory of his doubts, his confusions, his questions, his frustration, and at times even his anger. And I appreciated his honesty in all of it. Paul wrote to the Philippians, and he wrote this in a jail cell. In chapter 3, verse 7, and if you can imagine with me, me reading this over our brother but whatever was gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. See, whatever you lose in this life, it doesn't matter how the world defines it. God wants you to know that everything you lose in this life, He is going to reward you in the life to come. He has taken inventory of everything you lose. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I've lost all things. I consider them garbage, rubbish, dung, if you will, that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ Jesus." the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ. And yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death and somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. Now that I've already obtained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on. I press on to take hold of that for which Christ took hold of me. Forgetting what is behind, straining. And we know that Jerry strained, and especially in these last couple of years. Straining toward what is ahead. 
I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Amen. For all of us then who are mature should take such a view of things. And if on some point you think differently, that too God will make clear to you at his appointed time. Only let us live up to what we've already attained, joining together and following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as a model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For as often as I told you, before and now, I tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach, and their glory is their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that we will be like his glorious body one day. Amen. No more pain for Jerry. No more sorrow. No more questions. No more confusion. No more chaos, but also no more Jerry for us here, right? And so we mourn, we grieve, but we don't grieve without hope because we understand, as D.L. Moody said it best, when they tell you I'm dead, don't believe them, for then... I'm more alive than ever. When they tell you Jerry's dead, don't believe him. For he is now more alive than ever before. Amen? The Bible tells us that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Jerry has joined the Hall of Fame, the Hall of Faith. He has joined the crowd that surrounds us today. He is now cheering us on to our victory end. May his life, see, may his life be an example that will motivate us in the valleys of our lives. And if you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, maybe you're watching online and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you want to give Jerry the greatest gift you can give him? Amen. Give your life to Jesus today. Amen. Amen. Declare him your Savior. Declare him your Lord. See, that's what this is all about. And what I love about Jerry's life is that Jerry was about a different J, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And we honor. And Marty, I know that no mom should have to say goodbye to their child. And the grief that you feel, I don't understand. But I want you to know, you did a good job. You did a good job, Marty. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Words do not adequately express the sorrow that we feel. But Lord, your word says that you are close to the brokenhearted. And Lord, would you draw close to Marty, to the siblings, to the extended family and friends, would you speak to us, Lord? Some of us have never heard the voice of God. Some of us have never experienced the Holy Spirit. Lord, would you honor Jerry's life? And would you let we who have never heard your voice 
speak to our soul right now. And Lord, if there's someone in this congregation today watching online that doesn't know you as their Savior, Lord, would they ponder, would they pause, and would they receive the power, the powerful gift of eternal salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, thank you for Jerry. Thank you for the 17 years that he prayed over this church and prayed for us to be who you created us to be. God, we honor his life today. And we look forward to seeing him again one day. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. I want to invite Andrea to come at this time. Or, no, whoever. Microphone's a little intimidating. <laughs> I'm Andrea. Um, first of all, just forgive my nervousness. I think we all have a little bit of a fear of public speaking, but um, who better to help us conquer that fear than Jerry? <laughs> so um, after I finish sharing, I'm going to invite um, Jerry's family up to share some words, and then um, we're going to invite anyone up. We're going to do an open mic to share memories or stories, whatever you want to share about Jerry. Um, So I'd invite you to start thinking about those things now. And um, I, um, I want to first, I I don't see the, the ladies who did the, did the worship, but I want to first thank them. I think they did an amazing job leading us in worship, and it was really special for me because I felt like I got to worship with Jerry one last time, so thank you guys for that. And Pastor Kelly, um, I just want you to know that that Jerry wanted a pastor that would walk with him and bless his life, and he got that from you, so thank you for that. You were a blessing to him, yeah. But most importantly, I want to speak to Marty and to Tammy and to Wendy and to Leslie online Um, I watched you guys love and serve Jerry immensely, and you guys did a beautiful job, and um, you loved him. You loved him well. You served his life well, and he loved you very, very much, so my condolences. Jerry was a good friend of mine. I met him here at Vanguard in 2011, 2012, somewhere around there when I first came. I feel like it was actually my very first service here that I met Jerry. Um, I met him and Mike Smith. And a group of us, after the service, went to that little Mexican restaurant right here in the parking lot, and we all had a meal. And I instantly loved both of them because they were both very real. Uh, But it was very evident that they loved Jesus. So um, Jerry, Mike, and myself, we became like three amigos, and we did everything together. We spent many, many mornings uh, having breakfast. Most of the time we went to um, Sister's Cafe on Platt, and we would do Bible studies all the time. That's all we ever did, and talk about theology and search things of God out and also BS a little bit and, you know, cause a little trouble. It was just a lot of fun. I actually took that photo right there. Me, Mike, and Jerry went to somebody's wedding. It was in this beautiful place down in old Colorado City. It was this beautiful property. It had beautiful garden and beautiful statues. And so the three of us decided to do glamour shots all around. And (laughs) but um, good old Jerry, his was the only one that turned out, and it looks good. Look at that pose. Look at those hands. (laughs) So Jerry was very charismatic. I loved how he was always able to go into a social setting 
that had a little bit of tension and a little bit of awkwardness, and he would start storytelling and just get things moving, and he just made everybody feel very comfortable. Um, he was also very trustworthy and reliable. He and Mike Smith drove my wedding dress down to South Padre, Texas, which is a 17 plus hour drive. They drove straight through, um, and Jerry was so tired that on my wedding day, because he got in super late, he did not sleep really well in the hotel, that he didn't even want to go to the reception. He's like, nope, I'm here for the wedding and I'm going back. But my dress made it. <laughs> Uh, but you guys should ask Mike about how he drove back through Raton Pass going 100, 110 miles an hour, blasting rock and roll. <laughs> he was ready to get home. Uh, Jerry was also a pain. He was a pain in the butt and an instigator. If he felt strongly about something, he wouldn't let it go and he'd just keep pushing you about it. Uh, he was actually the reason that I applied for the job here at Vanguard, and uh, I swear to God, he bothered me for two months about it, and he just kept saying, just go in and ask, just go in and ask. I was like, Jerry, they're not going to hire me. He's like, just go in and ask. So finally I did, and, and they hired me. They didn't know. <laughs> so uh, Jerry called everybody Trixie. Hey, Trixie. I love that. <laughs> Uh, he was an amazing storyteller. Some of my favorite stories were of his childhood, like when he stripped the wood paneling off of his bedroom and his um, closets to make a bike ramp in the backyard. He did not ask his mom that, nope. Yeah. <laughs> or how he would run from the, crop, from the cops um, on his dirt bike, and he would go through fields and through the neighborhood and... So apparently he liked to instigate cops as well. <laughs> and of course, there's the infamous story of Jerry's entrepreneurial spirit during his youth, selling items out of his sister's bedroom window like a drive through <laughs> Honestly, you guys, his stories were so crazy and wild that I didn't know if they were true. But just before his death or right after his death, I asked his sister and they're like, oh, yeah, those are true. So Jerry was also a little crazy. He used to talk incessantly about uh, storing mass amounts of food and water just in case things went south. Yep. And he would say, people are going to come to you for food and water, and you gotta give some, you, you got to have them. you you got to have something to give them, so store it. Um, but it was because he wanted to help people, and he did help people. He helped a lot of people, and he served people like nobody I had ever met. He patched holes in my carpet. He showed me how to put up wallpaper. He taught me and Chad how to install a dog door in our house. He babysat single mom's children. He bought single mom's diapers. He bought cars for people. I would venture to guess that everybody in this room has a story about how Jerry has served you or how you have watched him serve somebody else. Shortly before he passed, he prayed a blessing over Mike, my husband, my daughter, Alethea, and myself. And uh, right before he prayed, he would rub his hands together like this. And he was like, oh, I'm going to zap you. <laughs> and then he did the old Pentecostal bop on her head. <laughs> but true story, um, right after that, right after he prayed and my husband and I flew back to Texas, we experienced a miracle in our house, and so I, uh, I believe it was because of Jerry's prayer. He was a prayer warrior. Mm -hmm. um, the last thing I want to say are actually words from Jerry that he gave to me about a year ago when his health was taking a turn for the worse. So these words are actually specifically for those of you that haven't given your life to Jesus or those of you that have given your life to Jesus where your faith is struggling. Jerry loved Jesus more than anything, and his greatest desire is for you to give your life to Jesus and to walk closely with him. So his prayer for you comes from Matthew 5, 6, that you would hunger and thirst for righteousness. Jerry said, and I quote, Whew. 
God always made me hungry for his word. And I have always been attracted to real truth. When I first got saved, I was able to sit with the Holy Spirit for 43 minutes, and it changed my life. It was perfect, utter stillness, and it wasn't about words or teaching or something like that, but it was quiet, peaceful stillness. That comes from being in the presence of God. It caused me to fast and to study, and I have only been able to go through suffering because of his word. And it was worth it. And I want you to know that when Jerry said that, he emphasized it. It was worth it. He goes on to say, the horror that came with my health decline was still worth it. And that is what people should be asking God for, a supernatural experience. Amen. Amen. He said, even in horrible sufferings and through death, it is still worth the trade. End quote. Jerry also asked me to mention to you guys that he does not want anybody to feel guilty in regards to your relationship with him. He loved you very much, Darren, and everyone, and he knew that you guys loved him, and he he wants you to release that guilt. Jerry was well-loved, a good man, and a great friend. Um, Thanks to to Mikey, to Rand, and to Amber for getting the live stream. Uh, There are actually people from California, New Jersey, Texas, and Illinois that I know of that are joining this service, and I have never been to a funeral where people love somebody so much that they live streamed. Thank you, Jerry. I'm going to miss him dearly. Jerry, I'll see you soon. Give Jesus a hug for me and do me a solid and ask me to give an, ask him to give me another miraculous encounter with him because you know I'm a sucker for those. I love you, Jerry. Amen. Do I grab the side mics? So Tammy, I'll invite you up. My name is Tammy DeLore, and I am one of Jay's older sisters. Uh, As you know, and Pastor Kelly mentioned, uh, our older sister Leslie is watching. Wendy is front row, and my mom Marty is front row as well. And our dad is already in heaven. So thank you, Pastor Kelly, uh, your staff, your family, um, John and Sandy most definitely, Andrea and Chad Smith. Uh, Victoria and Ryan Reagan. Mike, thank you so much for coming back. We appreciate it. Um, Again, uh, Andrea has already thanked um, the folks that did all of this, but Andrea did uh, a great deal as well, and so we extend our our thanks. And uh, I think we've adopted you and you've adopted us, so we're grateful for that. Um, This is how we remember our brother. And, our, and my mom's son, most definitely. Uh, we were just chatting that uh, all of us, I was a senior in high school, uh, Jay was a junior, Wendy's a freshman, and we all had the fair faucet wings. <laughs> so um, we were certainly confused from behind uh, for, for each other, but uh, we had a great time and growing up in Southern California. And, we, and that's where we called our brother Jet. Gerald Irvin Tolley, his initials. Our mom started that, our dad, and so we knew him as Jet. And then um, he was he was definitely a handsome young man, towhead, blonde hair, blue eyes, California boy. Uh, he was athletic, so he was, uh, it was actually, we did, they did do motocross bikes on that ramp, but it was skateboards. That was the big thing. He would find empty pools in the neighborhood and start riding and doing his stuff and breaking body parts. Our mom was an RN at the, at the time. So, um, so Jet uh, was a wild man, most definitely. We then called him Jay later on in life, and uh, that was our dad's name. Uh, they, our dad's name was Gerald with a G. Mom didn't necessarily 
like that or there was confusion there because our dad was called Jay. Well, where's the J come from? So they changed J's name, Gerald, with the J. So we called him J for a lot of years. Uh, but I will be honest. We certainly lost our brother J for a lot of years. He loved to be on the road. He loved road trips. He had companions with his animals, his dogs, Harley and Hannah and Blue and now Zella, who's going to go home with Wendy and uh, get some more love and in Oklahoma, but uh, Jay, Jay certainly battled his flesh, and, and uh, we all have something, whether uh, you know it's a demon on our tail, uh, whatever, but he, he certainly fought, he lost a lot, um, and we lost him for a few years. But um, as the family began to grow up and be introduced to this Jesus, that is a miraculous, marvelous being that can indwell in us. Can you believe that? What a marvelous thing. What a gift. Thank you, Father. Um, so Jay um, happened to run into, or, or I mentioned a name from a family because my husband uh, was military and we were stationed in San Antonio, Texas at Lackland. And, um, I bumped in, knew, worshiped with a family, uh, the best family, um, Mike and Phyllis Best, and they did deliverance ministries. They were in um, the Springs at one time, and Jay said, Colorado, it's beautiful here, Tam, you ought to come. Well, I was traveling the world with a military man, so I was living a good life as well. So he made a point to visit the best, and that's where it began. He wrote letters seeking forgiveness to many women. I'm not surprised that he is moved and passionate about uh, the women's, the, the single mother's ministry and being available to them and trying to repair what other men maybe had damaged because he felt that he was one of those himself. And he sought the Lord in that on his face and in this church, um, and for every man that he met. Uh, our dad was there for us, but he was also military. He, took, he deployed a lot, um, but he could have done better for Jay. He could have done better for Jay. So as you have mentioned, our mom was both mom and dad for many, many years, um, and she made herself available to Jay, even in his tough years. So she kept him hanging on. And finally, mom searched for the answer uh, in all other religions, world religions, and runes, and you know, meditation, and oh, just a host of things. She has quite a testimony herself. Um, so there was a, a time when she and Jay could get connected on that level, um, and that made all the difference. Definitely. So this J guy was a total blow it case, you know, but aren't we all? Uh, I am. Um, the, the sweet thing that we have found here, not only in this church, but also in his isolation in Penrose, we can only, uh, I don't think Jay has any questions for, for where he is now. I think he's saying, okay, huh, that was worth it. Here I am, you know, here you are. So, but the isolation in Penrose really confused me for many, many years. But whatever he was working out, we so appreciate the man Jerry that he became. I, I just think it's awesome. The Lord gave me this progression from Jet J, Jerry. We didn't get all the goodies you got. right? For whatever reason. But we did try to love him the best we could. We did reach out. Our sister Wendy, I'm telling you, we would be on the phone because there was a crisis or a phone call from uh, dialysis or a hospital or some of you would reach out to us and we thank you very much for that. She'd be in her car Mother's Day morning, nine hours to get to Jay. So, 
Leslie certainly tried to stay in touch with Emma Plug, and she's our, our professor of English, and so she thinks on a different level. So she would just try to logically work it out with him. So we thank her most definitely for her efforts. Um, but the man, Jerry, pretty awesome, pretty awesome. All I can, can wrap it up with is that I heard one time that you can tell the health of a church by how loud the men are singing during worship. If you hear the men's voices, you got some good things going on. They are godly. They are humble. They are vulnerable, etc. And let me tell you, we have seen those men in this pa the past 20 days when we first arrived at Jay's place uh, to spend time with him because this time he was serious about no more dialysis, which we had heard before, but he was serious. So we came, we responded, but you did too. You did too. Thank you so very much. Um, the sweetness of watching the godly men of this community come to his home and pray with him and ignore, you, you know, you've already mentioned how he liked to dress to the nines. Socks, shoes, ties, vest, everything, three-piece suit. But Jerry didn't look like Jerry. And he was embarrassed by that. He was uncomfortable. But you guys paid no mind. You paid no mind and you came. And Matt sat with him and held his head over a bucket when he was having nausea. Uh, Matt, I think you were there for two hours in that same position. Sweetness, what a sweet gift. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And we did. Thank you, sir. And Darren, the godly tears that you shed were very, very special to us. And G, big man, thank you so much. And the ladies that you brought, and the representation of, the, of Vanguard, phenomenal. Thank you so much. Mike already said, dude, you're back. Yeah. Andrea's back to spend time with our brother and to be in support of our family um, and our families that we left. Uh, we, we praise God and thank, uh, thank you for my husband, Steve, and our girls, and Wendy's daughter, Heather. Leslie has a son, Jeremy. Uh, they're all noted in, in the program, and so we thank you very much for that. Oh, Lord. So I, I progressed from Jet, Jay, and Jerry, and then you made the exclamation point with the final J. Thank you, Jesus, and we thank you all very much. There's, there are no words, but please know our hearts. We love the Lord, and we thank you that Jay is certainly in his arms and running something up there, we know. And although, you know, he should be in a, a, a robe, I bet you he's not. Thank you very much. We love you. to invite up uh, Jerry's mom, Marty, and his youngest sister, Wendy. They're going to come up and say something. And then afterwards, um, I'll leave it open to an open mic. Anybody that wants to come up, feel free to just come share your words. We'd love to hear your stories. got something that I've always um, <laughs> loved that uh, my son Jet 
did with his best friend. I was at work, I came in, and they were in the kitchen, and the kitchen was full of smoke. <laughs> I think you've all been there. <laughs> and uh, finally I got around to asking the question, how did it all happen? What did you do? What did you do that I told you not to do? And uh, he said, Mom, he said, this really confuses me. He says, you know that box of um, gingerbread that, you know, you bake it sometimes? He said, well, he said, Roman and I, that was his best buddy. He said, uh, he said, we got it all put together, and um, then we're reading the directions like you told me to, and it said, grease the bottom of the pan. <laughs> and so he did. <laughs> and as we all know, he could not understand why anyone would word it that way. Yeah. He had a lot of problems with the way things were worded sometimes. <laughs> that's, that's just, everybody in this room, every parent in this room has something that just is so special like that. And that was my little boy. I had um, girls. Oh. <laughs> it's been a rough life. <laughs> and every woman that I ever talked to about having children, they'd always say the same thing. Oh, I'm so glad I don't raise girls. <laughs> Boys are so much easier. <laughs> Until you have to pick them up at Juvenile Hall at 3 o'clock in the morning. And, and it's just, Mom, but I had to go back and get my jacket. Uh -huh. I said, a police <laughs> officer was telling you to go get in the squad car, correct? Yes, but I had to go back and get the jacket because you had just bought that jacket for me. Oh, did you ever notice that? It always kind of comes back around to, I'm really following your orders. <laughs> and I just want to say something very sweet that my grandmother used to say to me. I was born in Nashville, Tennessee, but my mother left during the Second World War to go up and work. She was like uh, Rosie, the Rosie the Riveter, yes. And uh, so when I would come to visit my grandmother here, every night I would sleep in my grandmother's bed, which when you tell that story to uh, a teenager now, they just look at you like, you did what? You slept in the same bed as your grandmother? And I said, yeah. And she'd always say the same thing every night. Sing to me. And so I would. And then she would say what she said every night of her life. And the night shall be filled with music and the cares that infest the day will fold like the tents of the Arabs and silently steal away. And so for Jet, he has silently 
all away from me into the hands of someone who loves it every bit to yes. Tim's going to come get you. Tim, I'll go ahead. Hello. <laughs> I'm Wendy, Wendell, little sister, little Tolly, Jet's little sister. <laughs> I answer to all. Um, I, I don't really, I would just echo every word that everybody said. I'm, you all know my brother pretty well, so I'm just going to come up and say, ditto, and then leave. <laughs> uh, wow. I mean, it's really amazing. And I, I can't thank you guys enough. Um, so ditto. Um, I will share one thing with you. Um, about Jet. I was up about three weeks ago, and Tam was doing the dishes, and I had just sat down. I think my mom went to bed, and Jet was in his room, and he yelled. So I go running in there, and I'm like, what, what, what? And I sit down. He starts crying. And I said, Jet, what's the matter? And I hugged him, and I scratched his back, which we all know he loved, and you can get a free tutorial on how to do that by yourself from Jet. I, I've got that on speed dial. And I said, gosh, what is it? And he said, uh, I wasn't a good brother. I said, Wendell, I wasn't a good brother. I had three of the best sisters, independent, strong, savvy women, and I didn't do enough. I didn't support you enough. I wasn't there for you. And I feel really bad about that. And I just sat there and I said, well, Jet from one sister. I remember standing in a wick line, women, infant, and children, and I had Heather on my hip, and I was going to college. I went home that night, opened my mailbox, and there was an envelope in there. And I couldn't read the stamp where it was from. I recognized the handwriting a little bit, and I opened it up, and there was $50 in there. I'm looking. I put the $50 and went into my house. Well, I, throughout the years, I'd get an envelope with a 20 or a 50, right? <clears throat> I'd show up to visit wherever he was, and I'd leave in my coat pocket. Later, I would find a 20 or a 50. And he said, I did do that. Did, didn't I do that? And I said, yes, Chet. I just thought you were paying me back for practicing your karate on my head when I was eight. <laughs> and he said, I did do that. And I said, you're a big brother. You're supposed to jump out of the dark at me and make me scream. You're, you eat a whole box of Camp Crunch in one sitting. <laughs> you know, with a whole gallon of milk. And I never got a chance to try it. Right? Yeah. I said, the list can go on and on. I said, but you also fiercely defended me if I came home crying because somebody called me a name. You and 10 other guys would be there. I mean, that's, that's a big brother. You're a big brother. And he looked, he said, okay. I said, you and I are good. You and I are good. He said, oh, okay. So, I drive home, I'm going on a trip, so I drive home, I get the box from Zella, because I get Zella, so I'm all excited and I put the thing down there and I'm going through it. What do you think I pulled out? $20. <laughs> Stuck in the vest for Zella. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jet. So at this time, we want to give you an opportunity if you want to share a memory or something you want to say regarding Jerry. 
this is your time. So just raise your hand and I'll come get the mic. I loved watching firsthand Jerry Love on a single mom named Amber. And he let her rent from him half of his duplex. And he loved her so well. It was the most beautiful thing I got to witness. Oh, oh, I didn't know that. So, this mic is whoever wants to go next. Um, I was 14 when I started coming to Vanguard. I'm an emotional wreck. That's just me. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but Jerry, man, he was awesome, you know? Um, I'm 14 years. I'm a teenager, teenager. Woo, those years, right? Um, and Jerry, he, he, we had this thing. He'd, like, come up and, like, like I'm going to show you. He'd grab right here, and he'd, like, you good? And I'm, like, you good. And he, you good. <laughs> Well, one day he came up behind me and did it like this on both shoulders, like he, you know, almost like a neck massage. I turned around and I was like, oh, yeah, hey, like, all right, oh, when, like I was talking to somebody. Well, he tried it another Sunday. It wasn't me, it was a, a woman, a teenage girl that didn't even come here yet. It was the best thing. And I mean, we were like cry laughing, him and I. It was the best. Anyway. He played it off really good. He was like, hey, that's how I say hi to people. She was like, uh, that's a different church. <laughs> I'm good. I just want to say how grateful me and my family are for Jerry. I didn't get to see him much in the last few years. And I didn't know how sick he was until later. After I became a wife and mom, it was hard for me to stay in touch with people. He did tell me stories about who he was, but I didn't know him as that person. He was gentle, kind, and funny. That's how I knew him. Every time he would see me at Vanguard, he would give me a hug and say, how are you? And you knew when he asked, he genuinely cared. There were times when he would ask, and I would say, I'm okay. He knew I wasn't okay, and he would pray for me. There were other times he would say, hello, you look rested today, and that was nice to hear. And that was, in 2016, my middle sister became pregnant, and she didn't have very much support. So the woman at Vanguard, thank you, Tasha, thank you, Andrea, bought her some of the essentials she needed. And Jerry was there to pray for her and give her words of hope. He knew she needed to take her baby to doctor appointments. He bought her a car and fixed it up for her. I truly hope he knows how grateful we are for him. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say a couple words. Um, Jerry was just so extraordinary. I remember coming Every single week, if I didn't have a ride, he would pick me up, and me and my daughter, just a little kid, and we would just sit right there in those front rows, and he would just worship, and he just sits there, and he wants, he wanted to encourage other people all the time to be closer to God, to be closer to who you are in Jesus, and he really helped me in that sense so much. <laughs> um, sorry. I didn't come a lot, <laughs> um, so I realized that he was sick within these last couple months, and I was like, oh, maybe that's why I've been thinking of him so much, and I'm just so happy. It's such an amazing moment to see somebody continue with their life, mm -hmm. to not, like Pastor Kelly said earlier, to die once and then never have to feel those sorrows, those pains and sufferings again, and I'm just so happy that God placed Jerry in all of our lives, and he just continues to be there, and he'll always be there. So I'm just so happy. Yeah. 
Hey, if you guys want to say something and you want to just kind of like line up, it might make it a little bit easier. I don't know if there's anybody else who wants to say something. You want to? Okay. I don't mind, but do you mind if I say something before you get up there? Because uh, this, this has to do with you, Ms. Marty. Do you mind if I open up that Bible? Do you mind? So this is our brother Jerry's Bible. This is called Wear and Tear. It's kind of hard to put a cell phone up there, right? So for the sake of this, you know, the, um, the crazy thing is that the Scripture has a way to kind of join us together. And um, there's a, I don't know why I have a feeling. I just have a feeling. Let's see. First Corinthians, let's go to 10. Hmm. All this highlighter. You know, the... Um, I, I hear all the time people say, God will never give you more than you can handle. But I haven't found it in the scripture. And Jerry didn't either. So, um, he does give you more than you can handle. Because... The, the purpose of that is that we can come to terms that we are not enough. He is enough. Right? So, just like I haven't found it, Jerry didn't highlight it either. Um, and I'm going to tell you something, Mike. When, um, after we went to, uh, to go visit him, just pay our respects for the, at the, the end, um, you know, my wife, Amber, and, and Deb, they went back to the car, and um, I helped him back to his bedroom. And, um, you know, obviously I saw the, the Bibles open, Bibles. And then I, earlier that night I had asked him, what do you have to say to me? And he says, just never stop learning. I'm like, okay, that's pretty good. But then we spoke about you. So, <clears throat> how incredibly proud and thankful he was that his time invested in you, now it's paying off in different ways. So, I roped you into this, and you don't know about it, but I told Jerry, don't worry, we ain't going to stop. So... Before you got, you know, you get up there and say something, just know that I made a commitment to Jerry on your behalf and you don't know about it until now. So here you go, brother. I'm over here. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> All right. This just got real, man. This has been a real day today. I'm not playing. I, I, real quick, I saw a rabbi today. He knew, he remembered Jerry when he walked in. It was 2010. I saw a Sefer Torah for the first time with Jerry. It changed my life. Jerry, how many of us has he been around in the changing? But let's, let's get real. Heaven's calling. Psalm 150. I, I thought this was very appropriate because one day we're going to see that sanctuary come down to earth. And we get to see this. So without ado, this is for you, Jerry. <clears throat> hallelujah, 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 
hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah, do you want to come up here, Sam? First of all, I know the ladies I know, um, Deb Koda, Katrina, Massey, and my mom, she's very fave because I was in here with my brother, Jerry. Because I remember when, when um, and other things, I met my mother from a time ago when Jerry was in the front row and he laid down on the floor. Someone was here in the front row. And he laid down. He prayed for our people, for us. He, he's thinking about Deb Goda. And he remembers Tasha and Cuddy from Long Hills Girl from day one. Since I remember of him. <laughs> that moment back there, <laughs> she's a member of our family. Jerry, you are a brother. You're the prayer warrior. He's strong, mighty tower. He's the God for heaven. Just go. Walk with him. Faith and love. We both those. Love protects. Love never fails. This first Corinthians 13. I just read all scriptures where God told us about five days ago, he said, love comes first. Brain, family, children come first. The first day two of the jury said, Smith, I remember Chad, Arthur, it is out here, John, Sandy, the best um, outdoors we got here, our time. Because we are we're on the left side, right here, this row, we remember Tasha and us came here from day two. This is important. What? This is what was Sandy Jones sitting there in the corner at the, the right side. What was the day? Stand up. We remember the first I know I met Sandy the behind from Georgian T-shirt and um, sweatshirt. I've seen it before. She remembers of uh, Jerry Ross. We did it for his food, but I'm time ago. Still, we should stand up for our old friend. She's right there. From, uh, right there. Uh, she remembers of uh, Dinon and his wife, Andrea. You know, um, they are together, and they remember home from no time ago. I they remember Jerry. Only Debbie, uh, never yell. She does Jerry for his mother's knife, special money. I they remember Jerry from no time ago. Something what I said about what Tasha, she was doing the same thing for us. Jerry loved it. And he told Sandine, she said, spend time and, and send me. That's what he said. She said it. Every time I'm going to hear it, send me and spend me. You give my life to Jesus. We must follow him. Every other, every Sunday, she'll do it tomorrow. She could do it. 
she say, pray, pray, Lord, him. Think about Jerry and her. We're going to do it tomorrow. We're going to love her. We're going to love him. Think of his sisters, mothers. Then up their son, Jerry, and we got him dead. Because we got him dead, his best brother, I know. I remember. He said to me, the blood well. He remembers of us. He's, he's dead by my side. He's, he's our angel. He's the man of the other year. I remember my mom's cat from his hair. And he told me, she told me, she cut his hair about five days ago, but his, his home. Because he cut his hair two times ago, but now she did. Right there, that dress, back to us. That great hair, she remembers. No time ago. <laughs> That's what I'm coming here for. All the rest of the years, for his life, it's time for love comes. Up here. My heart, up here, healed. Since I've been hospitalized, not graduated at Paris Hospital, but I came in to see him out there. Think of him, me, and dad. And similar and moved dad, my dad too, all the rest of the years, they remember Jerry, not time ago. It's time to face it, brisket of his knife. He told me about, about his mom, and his sisters, more than his friend, Billy. He knows the songs, knows the scriptures, so he knows, he knows it. Since I'm standing here beside him, look at his face. He's been here before. He came to the stage, talked about cutting of his knife, what he told him to do. He knows everything. He knows he came here with the offering, think about what he did, send the money, but he moved, boys. When um, other, I better been here for a big church about six years ago. I've been at the Granary. I've been here for 15 years. So, Jerry is my best prayer warrior for me. And it's time for following his path. Remember him. Thank you, brother. That was really good, Sam. Thank you. Mm. I had the privilege of serving on the, the prayer team with Jerry. And um, just coming from a different kind of background, um, I learned so much about intercessory prayer from Jerry just by watching him anoint people and put hands on. And just, I mean, he was a true intercessor and I learned so much and I'm so grateful for brother Jerry I I'm just very grateful that I got to serve with him in the prayer team John and I were able to go um, see Jerry a couple weeks before he passed and John uh, was able to give communion to Jerry his last communion very special. And we were praying over him, and I had my hand on John's hand. And during when John was praying over him, I felt something, and Jerry kissed my hand. It was the sweetest thing. It's a memory I will have forever. Um, and then the other thing I'm very proud about is Jerry liked the Denver Broncos. And guess who got his Bronco stuff? Woohoo! Now we have to hope the Broncos are something to cheer for soon. <laughs> That's called a miracle. All right. Um, I thought about what I was
was going to share, but first of all, thank you guys for allowing us to come um, and pray with Jerry one last time. Um, we've been here over a decade, and Jerry was one of the first people to welcome us. Um, and somehow became part of our family and spent frequent days coming to my home, helping us do whatever needed to be done around the house. Um, there came a point where we had to build a room, and me and my oldest, which was seven, 17 at the time, had to build a back bedroom because we took four kids in. And um, first, Jerry said, I have all this building supplies, and I love to build. Let me help you. And I said, Jerry, you're not healthy enough to do that. We got it. Just come over and hang out. So he came over little by little and would bring little by little, supply after supply. <laughs> and eventually, before I knew it, he was helping build. Um, prayed over every part of that room as those children would be sleeping there. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you a little secret about Jerry if you don't know. He loves Amber's chicken tacos. <laughs> and this is how much he loved them. <laughs> he would not take payment for um, the help because he did it for Jesus. And he served our family so well and interceded on our behalf so many times. And I forever be grateful. So his payment <laughs> was chicken tacos. And um, he would fast for days so that he could eat them. And he came up with his own challenge. He was going to beat a record that there was never even a record of how many chicken tacos <laughs> you could eat. The last record to beat was 16. Um, <laughs> with rice and beans, see, also. 16. Um, when we got to say goodbye to Jerry for the last time, I asked him to say hello to my mother. And he says, of course, I'm going to say hello to everybody in your family and Vanguard Church's family. We're all going to be reunited, and it's not a goodbye. I'll see you later. He blessed me and Deb Guida in allowing us to wash his feet and pray over him before he, he left. But we love you, Brother Jerry. And as it says in your obituary, you're home now. But you're also here with us until we see you again. Um, Dion and Andrea, I don't know if it's like this in North Dakota, but it was like this in South Dakota. Can you hear me okay? We had East River and West River, and the two would never meet. And that's, that's kind of how the, I'm starting this story out because I'm going to end up with an interesting bumper sticker. But I'm a little possessive about Vanguard. I've been going here a long time and know quite a few people. And this new guy came in, he was dressed up, and he used to hang out over on East River. <laughs> well, I hang out over on West River on the other side. So I'm looking at this guy, and I go, who is this new flash-in-the-pan guy? He looks pretty good, but he can't be for real. Um, as I back up a few years, um, Cindy and I were in a life group for quite a few years. And at the end of every one of our two-hour meetings, we'd ask, who can we pray for? Who can we pray for for you? And um, we'd go around and we'd take names and we'd jot it down and, and we'd do some praying, some hardcore praying for each of the people in our group. And when it came to Cindy and I, it was always, you know, God's good. We just don't have any struggles. Life is just way too good for us. And that went on for years and years. 
couple years after our life group ended, I was up over here because our family was terribly afflicted with death. And who was it that came up and put his arms around me? Yeah, it was that guy who was here every week on the wrong side of the church. (laughs) And he crossed over to West River and hugged on me over here. That's how I got to know Jerry. I wish I could have known him a lot better over the years. Because as he became sick, I became closer to him. And I'll end up with the bumper sticker. It was written for Jerry. I think you've all seen it on the back of cars occasionally. It always makes me stop to pause. It's um, real men love Jesus. That was our Jerry. He was number one. And he lived it. Thank you. <clears throat> well, as I was saying, that uh, Jerry is, uh, has been very important to me in my life, and and uh, we we became extremely close. And I believe it was February 2010. Uh, I was. Uh, started to attend a, a small group here in the church and that's where I met Jerry and oh probably a couple times and uh, then I saw him on a Friday night at Southside Johnny's and that's all it took and said hey he's kind of like me <laughs> kind of having a little wild seed and we just hit it off and you know we just came just best of friends and and you know Jerry he 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 always told me that he he tried several churches as I did too. We shared our stories and just wanted to be plugged in and really involved and be part of the community. And he what he was looking for was a relationship with his pastor. And and he didn't really get that other places and but he got it here. And he he hung on that so much that Sometimes it's a little distracting, but when the pastor would pray, he would repeat every word, every word. Because, and I asked him why, and he said, "Well, he just wants to reinforce it. He wants to make it that much more powerful, because he 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 really he he knew that Pastor Kelly's prayers was very powerful and meant something, and he wanted to join in on that, and." Uh, and forgive me, the sisters over here, I don't remember your names, but I watched him with you and your mother and your your daughter as a young mother yourself. He loved you guys. Yes. And uh, I would have a get-together at my house, and so many new people would show up because Jerry, I invited Jerry, <laughs> and that's when I met you guys. <laughs> and uh, that was that was my buddy. That was my buddy, and and uh, we had some pretty crazy times. One of them, my wife told me, "You got to tell that story." We we love to go look at toy haulers, camper trailers, whatever. <laughs> we went to Camping World one one day, and oh, there was a storm that was threatening to come over the hills, and oh, we wanted to do it anyway. It was kind of chilly and wind blowing a little bit, so we went in there and. Man, we just had, we spent a couple hours just looking through all the trailers. Man, it's, no one around must be the storm. Well, when we went to leave, uh, drive out, well, the gates were closed. <laughs> and we had been in there all by ourselves for two hours. They had closed, but uh, I guess the manager, he had came in and opened the gate right before we drove through the gate. And he came in for a few minutes, and he left, locked up, and we were in there by ourselves, just, <laughs> just had a good time, had to call the police to get us out. <laughs> and, of course, they had the ideas and all that, and, and we had some crazy stories. But he, uh, I'm from Oklahoma, and his sister now lives in Oklahoma, and he always uh, 
wanted us both to take a road trip together and, as well as seeing the country. But that's what his passion was to uh, to just just see the see the world, see the country, spin just meet new people. He wanted to meet new people. And he was such a, a, a an extrovert as I'm an introvert, and I guess that's how we just hit it off. But and boy, he always bragged about his sisters had all the cutest girls over, and he liked having sisters. <laughs> but uh, he was something else. I, I, I sure love my brother. And Matt, where's Matt? Matt, right here. Matt works with us. Matt, you're a good man. I took Jerry, I took Matt over to help Jerry in his last, I don't know, a few months. And Matt went over there by himself. How many times? Matt, several times. Because he, you know, he, you can tell that Jerry loved people, so you just want to love him back. And you just want to be like that, and you just be, yeah, yeah. And I don't know what I'll say. I just, I just wanted to tell my brother I love him. And I just wanted everybody to know. Hi. Um, Before I went to see Jer the last time that I saw him at his house, um, I was praying and talking to God about it. And I hope this makes sense. It did to me, <laughs> but that doesn't mean it will for you. Um, it's just a little, a little thought. Um, I titled it The Love and Pain of Mourning. The deeper the love, the deeper the pain as we say goodbye or see you later when someone leaves the earth. The journey of Jerry's precious love for the Trinity gave me a glimpse into the pain that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have experienced in the depth of their love for us because their love is deeper than any other love. Their pain when we don't follow them or we're not theirs yet, it hurts them deeply because it goes, it goes hand in hand with how deep the love is. Jerry touched so many lives, I would even dare to say hundreds, because of the who God created him to be and the love that he and the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit shared. It was an in intimate relationship between Jerry and the Trinity. Indeed, the Father in Jesus and the Jesus in the Father in the Trinity three in one gave us someone special in Jerry. He blessed us because he loved Jesus so much that he just wanted everyone to be saved and he wanted everyone to know and experience the love of Jesus. I have a couple of scriptures that um, remind me of Jer. Um, he clung to these verses often in the middle of the night when he couldn't work because he was too ill and when he lay prostrate before the Lord and I'm not we're not joking he he came up here and he would lay flat on his face worshiping and praying in Job 13 15 to 16 it says though he slay me yet I will trust him he also shall be my salvation and Jerry quoted that over and over and over again when he had no strength that was his verse that he cried out. Though you slay me, Lord, so you, though you slay me, Father, I will trust you. Psalm 
Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul and he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Those are the things that kept Jerry going. He loved people. And he loved people's souls. Anybody else? You want to go? Man, uh, Jerry has been very close to me. Um, I know Angela for a long time. Uh, I was on a prayer team with Jerry. Um, but he was there when I needed him the most. I mean, I, going through something. And then w- one day we went to Wade's Cafe to have lunch just by, by ourselves. And Jerry, man, he was a friend. I need a friend. Um, Jerry's the kind of person that he's always there for anybody who needs a friend. I remember Jerry because he was a very close friend of mine. Even my sister Veronica knows that. She, he was there for me when I need him. Since I've been coming to Vanguard with Pastor Kelly, he's been an awesome pastor with, for me and my family. Um, I know Jerry with Angela for a long time. We've been friends for a long time. And I remember we always hang out together for a while. For a hard times and good times, so good laughs, bad laughs. Uh, Jerry was always there to make sure I'm doing okay. Every time he sees me, hey, how you doing? I'm like, I'm doing okay. No, I'm doing good, Jerry. Are you sure? I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Uh-uh. Yeah, look like it. I'm like, Jerry, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good, Jerry. Oh, well, this is okay. Well, you know, he always helped me to pray. He's always very, very powerful prayer warrior. He always teaches me how to pray and all the, how to seek the Lord when you get on your knees and worship God. Full of you, hundred percent fully. So, uh, so Jerry has been an awesome friend to me for hard times. I always come to him for advice, for wisdom, and he's always there with arms wide open. He always hugged me. He's always been a blessing in my life, and I, 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 w- I was with him, but I don't know him when he was sick. But he was there when he wasn't sick for me, and because of that, I always remember him. He's always have a place in my heart. And I will always will miss you, Jerry. Thank you for being there for me, brother. I love you. Anybody else? Okay. Well, in that case, um, maybe we'll close this little uh, time right now. Oh, you want to go? Oh, you have a video. Okay, well, I'll just say one more thing. Because Jerry would be disappointed if we didn't say this. Vanguard Church was everything that Jerry needed and wanted while he was here on this earth. If you don't have a place to go tomorrow, we welcome you to come here. We're going to have baptisms, okay? So what Jerry had for you, we still have for you, okay? One relationship is still here. If you want to be prayed over and anointed, it's still here. If you want to serve as a prayer warrior, we'll take you on. They took me on. We'll take you on. Okay? (laughs) So we celebrate this for Jerry. Here's the video. Thank you, everybody, for coming.
I, we could go on and on. I have a couple more stories, but I feel like we just need to stand and pray. We? <laughs> Father, we're just amazed at your work yes. in our hearts and lives. Yes. People with different backgrounds, people with different scenarios, people yes. grew up in different cultures. just moved how you're 
great story of what you have done on the cross, Jesus, and what your Holy Spirit can do in the hearts and lives, people from different backgrounds, just coming together to love and to worship and to pray. And God, you know I have been profoundly impacted by Jerry. Remember, I'm walking around Theater 7 one of the first times, and I was praying, and he was right behind me praying every word. <laughs> and I was a little disconcerting because I grew up Wesleyan, and we didn't normally do that where <laughs> I grew up. But God, he just took me, you had him t take me to a different level of praying in agreement and how important that is. And so, Lord, I'm grateful for Jerry. I'm grateful for the prophetic word he spoke at for me right over here. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We praise you. And the prophetic words, I'm sure he spoke to so many. So many, Lord. We're so grateful for the gifts that you gave him and the gifts that he employed for behalf of your sweet name, Jesus, and behalf of your church. Now, Lord, I pray a blessing over this congregation, over everyone that has come, over mom, over the sisters, over the family members, Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Ghost, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 John, thank you. Bless you. What, thank you what wonderful so trip.